Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at a couple uh, <clears throat> a couple different errors that happen. One's called reached end of file while parsing. And this one uh, is really easy to trigger when you've got lots of methods and you've got <clears throat> lots of nesting and loops and conditional statements and all these things. It's going to be a lot more obvious when I show it to you here in the video. Um, but here's the, me the, the method message you get. It says reached end of file while parsing. And what that means is when you type into your development environment, it's constantly going to be assessing your code to make sure you're not creating any syntax errors. And it's always looking for starting and ending. Uh, whenever we have these curly braces, we have an opening one and we have a closing one. Now, the challenge in this case is, so my method has a start and a finish, but the class, you see how when I click on it, it goes to red. <clears throat> the class doesn't have a closing bracket. So what is happening is it's parsed the whole file and it reached the end of file without closing off the class. So the solution to solving this one is to take a good look at your brackets. Make sure each method has a start and a close. And an easy way to do that is you can collapse these, right? So if you have lots of methods, uh, right? You can have lots of methods. Um, if you collapse them down, you can see the start and finish of these brackets like this. And it's really evident where things have gone awry. So, you know, if somewhere in the middle here I, I missed a bracket, um, well, it's going to give me a legal start expression. That's going to be a different one. But maybe down here, um, it's going to be nice and obvious. <clears throat> so, uh, so reach identifiable parsing, very simple one to solve. It's just a bracketing issue. Look for opening and closing brackets on each of your methods. Um, <clears throat> Now the other uh, the other one we wanted to talk about today was I cannot find a symbol. <clears throat> so let's expand this. So that one's typically uh, typically if we say mm, let's say we had a string for my name, so I'm going to call it my name equals uh, Fred. And when I hover over this error, it says I cannot find a symbol. And then it says specifically the symbol I can't find is a variable called my name. <clears throat> and what that means is we've written here clearly what is a variable name, but at no point prior to this have we actually defined what type of data it is. So <clears throat> in the system, it hasn't allocated any memory to store uh, this information or set up a pointer from this name to that memory location. So what we have to do is Whenever you see, I cannot find, oops, I cannot find a symbol, and it says the variable is my name, then what you can do, you got a couple options. One is you can left click, you can create a local variable, right? So if I do that, see how it puts a data type, it assumed a data type, it read that this data type was a string, so it put a string in front here. Um, <clears throat> so that, all that that does is it now knows what type of data it is, it's going to store. Um, it's going to create spot in memory for it, and it's going to have this point to that spot in memory. Uh, another scenario where you might have that is um, if you are using a class, for example, the scanner class, and here, if you read the error, it says it cannot find a symbol. In this case, it says the symbol is a class called scanner. And if it's a custom class that you're, that you're going to create, then you just have to add a custom class to your, um, to your project. Um, or if it's something like Scanner that's a predefined class, what we need to do is we left click on the little light bulb here. Most development environments have some form of a, a lookup. And here you can see you can use an import for the java.util scanner, um, which is the most common one. But there's a couple other ones you could use, or you can create your own custom scanner class. So I'm going to use this one here. And if you look, it added this line of code that says import. 
and it points to the class files, right? The actual Java files for this class. And now it knows how to use the scanner. And if I, if I type keyboard dot, I can get all the methods available to scanner objects. So those are the two errors. So the first one was reached in a file while parsing, which means we just forgot a bracket. And the other one was cannot find a symbol, either a variable, in which case we defined the variable type, or we couldn't find a class, in which case nine times out of 10, we just need to import uh, a class name. And that's it for today. <laughs>